you can see the deep cracks in the soil. So that it's had no water since March. I'll show you a little bit further ahead. This is absolutely no water as against, this is the growth as against one tillage planted the same day, exactly the same circumstances, complete dry land, the difference between no till and tillage. Here I want to demonstrate the, how deep the roots have gone in the, in the section I've dug out a plant here and you can, I broke these roots off but that's your tap root and the no-till planter compresses the seed in, its seed in the slot. This goes down another 100 millimeters. This is bone dry soil. You can see it's absolutely no moisture in it at all and yet look at these the, the fine roots above here where there was no soil disturbance whereas next door there are no plants at all growing and this is literally like a rock and to give you an idea how deep these cracks go down I've marked just up front here I've marked you can see how deep the cracks are in the dry soil and it's literally gone down the whole depth of that rod so tillage where you've got a plant and you can see the health of the plant we had 18 millimeters of rain day before yesterday but even before the rain it was still pretty healthy there's your legume your veg and there you can see its root and this is rye you can see the longer root there so there the two roots are as I say yeah you've got a plant and there you've got no plants at all you can see from the from the soil itself when you dig this plant out that the tillage did help, but we had no, we've, all the roots are on the surface. Whereas previously they had, you had that tap root going down deep. So when you, when you, when you till the soil, you actually limit the development of the root. And you get a much poorer germination. There's just nothing down deep. None of these roots go down deep. You can see the soil is softer, but remember, they're all subsurface roots. Look there, they're all on the surface. There's no tap root. There's no tap root. Very vulnerable to drought where you've tilled the soil. There's nothing. It's dry below. This is after 18 mils of rain. But you, yesterday you can see you might get more after rain, but I'm talking about dry situation. You get more water penetration, but there's here your dry soil is. Your clods. So you're much more vulnerable when you till the soil. But the most striking is here. Now this was tilled twice where we're standing now and seeded twice. And you can see that there's almost no plant here. The soil is soft. There's no compacted layer. It's easy to, you can push it in all the way, but we had no germination. And of course this is very vulnerable if we had to have a thunderstorm this soil would wash away you can see it's very soft beautiful black soil turf soils nothing wrong with the soil nothing seeded there nothing grew planted with the same planter but the soil was too loose so you tilled this twice this is tilled twice but there's no plant no plant germination there so why till? At the end of the day, you've got to ask yourself the question, why till? All you do is you make yourself vulnerable, especially on this kind of slope, for storm damage. And you only get about 10% of the plants germinating. Okay, if you look at the cost associated with tilling it twice, with a ripper, at least two to three hundred rand per hectare, which you've spent totally unnecessarily, and also your diesel usage, and you've only got a fraction of the plant population. Whereas there we didn't till at all on that where we first looked where the no-till was and we've got much, much more. And remember, this has also been irrigated, whereas that wasn't irrigated at all. The, the pale green in front of us, of course, is, is a volunteer group by itself. But look at the health on the section that didn't have volunteer and also the section that had almost no water. There's a substantial difference and where we're standing currently that had that was irrigated post planting 
this is now with 18 millimeters of moisture you can see the quality of the soil is brilliant there's nothing wrong with soil the soil test there's no shortages of minerals it's purely how the seeds been placed in the soil and yeah the humus on this land is about 3.6 percent so it's higher compared to most soils so it's still crumbly even where we where we had no till it was crumbly so the humus can partially compensate well completely compensate for the lack of rainfall so when almost goes to far goes as far to say we create our own droughts and I think it's really obvious from what we formed there in the beginning why rip to do no till without any tillage is also perhaps not the ideal so what our policy now is that we till all the lands with a yeoman's plough which doesn't invert the soil it maintains the humus on the top but breaks the compacted layer which we're now experiencing roughly 110 115 millimeters that's where all the previous equipment in effect that's the depth to which we planted so we break that compacted layer once maybe every four years and so that the root will then fully will fully go into that soil. Remember there's no fertilizer either. Well last year the first time we planted in December we put in the sorghum after having been into a perennial for a good 20 odd years and uh, we didn't know what to do with the sorghum and eventually we cut it off and grazed it with the electric fence yeah, it got frosted and, and then we grazed it and we had phenomenal results. Totally un, unbeknown, we, we had 42 cattle on this little area here. It's about four hectares plus a little bit of adjacent felt. And they put on, I didn't weigh them unfortunately, but they put on, a, a, they came off your fat. And they were here, on here for almost two months, grazing a meter a day. We'd move the electric fence a meter a day. And that was on the sorghum mixture. There was sorghum, sedan grass, barley, oats, and a legume in the land itself. Also, again, with no fertilizer. This is known as shepherd's purse. It's very deep rooted, and it's in fact one of the one of the plants that open up the minerals deep down. It's got a tap root on it, which everybody says it's a weed, but in fact it's one of those plants that can can access the minerals deep down in the soil. I can't even get it out. It's probably deeper than the rod that I'm... You can give you an idea there. So weeds have a, a role. They address, they bring the minerals up from deep down. You shouldn't ever have one plant growing in a particular area. So what we're doing now, we're mixing up to 10 different species in what we call a summer cover crop and a winter cover crop. This is chicory and it's a herb. It's got a very deep root, yeah. And here your clovers are. It's a bit wetter here, you've got your little clover growing here. You can see the little indentations on the leaf. There we are there. The, cri the critics of no-till maintain that you can't continue to no-till, but that's primarily due to the lack of oxygen in the soils. So there are two ways to solve that is a you've got to break that compacted layer initially either mechanically or by using a deep rooted brassica like a radish but that takes longer or you've got to incorporate that diversity of seed into your plant and let the plants do the work for you but most of us can't wait that long so we come in and aerate the soil and that will be using a, a yeoman's type ply which maintains the humus on top of the soil. So you're not, you're not burying that trash. And we'll show you that working tomorrow.